are looking mighty fine right now. You can even smell them on television. We are at Miller Park. No doubt about that when you see the brats and the tailgating. Dodgers and Brewers ready to battle here in game two of the series. Mike Fires and Zach Greinke out on the hill. Fires makes his first start of 2014 for Matt Garza, who is placed on the disabled list this week. And Greinke 0-3 lifetime against his former clubs including a loss last year here at Miller Park. Welcome back aboard of our coverage here of Brewers Baseball. Craig Kishan and Jerry Augustine. Let's first start with Mike Fires. Gets a big start here. He could be making a few more for Matt Garza. Some outstanding numbers, though, at AAA, including 129 strikeouts. Yeah, and it all starts. He has a deceptive delivery. He throws straight over the top, and he throws strikes. He's got a good fastball, a four- and a two-seam fastball. It really comes, though, with his break of ball and being able to command that changeup on a good downward playing it's going to be important from him tonight to have good focus staying ahead of hitters use all his pitches and getting ahead is going to be really important and lastly enjoy the moment there's nothing better than pitching a major league game he's been here before enjoy it fires making his 26th big league start here but the first of 2014 and it's a big start against his former teammate zach Greinke. Dominant at Miller Park, a 15 and 1 mark, but his last time here was his first loss. The Brewers beat him in May. And there's something else that, you know, when you pitch on the road, you go out there, you're not used to the mound. And one thing about Zach Rickey, he likes to dictate the game. He's a power pitcher or he can be a finesse pitcher. So it'll be interesting to see when he starts tonight which direction he will go. All right, it's Grinky and Fires. How about the defense behind Fires? It's been outstanding on the entire homestand, in fact, all season long. Dan Rock meets you on the other side to talk about the Brewer Gloves when we come back.
Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Menards. Save big money on all your home improvement needs at Menards. By Miller Lite, now in the original can, it's Miller time. By Toyota, let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines, find our fares online only at southwest.com. Beautiful McKinley Marina. The boats are out. Great day to do a lot of stuff here in Milwaukee today. It's a beautiful Saturday night, and we're ready for baseball in just a moment. Brian Anderson with Bill Schroeder. We're looking forward to this matchup tonight. It is the return of Zach Grinke to Miller Park, the former Brewer. And, of course, the Brewers are going to send up Mike Fires. And Mike Fires is a guy that uh, get, does get a lot of strikeouts, Rock. But the Brewers' defense has been a big story in this series. So if there are baseballs put in play, the Brewers feel like they're in a pretty good spot right now. It's been a nice homestand as far as defense goes. The Brewers have committed only one error on this homestand. It was all the way back on Tuesday, fourth inning. Segura made an error, but... This guy's been unbelievable. I mean, the, the outfield defense, the infield defense. Aramis Ramirez is moving around like a young kid again, finally healthy. And I think a lot of the defensive issues that the Brewers had last year were because of inexperience at first base. That's not the case anymore. Over Bay Reynolds have really done a lot to improve the overall defense. The Brewers have committed only one error in their last five games. That's why they've been playing, some, well, playing pretty good baseball and winning games. All right, well, we're set for round two, game two. Brewers won last night. Can they make it two in a row over Don Mattingly's Dodgers? Frankie and Fires, lineup's first pitch coming up next. with us, Sophia Minnett, our reporter tonight, and we're looking forward to this matchup here. The Brewers and the Dodgers, a battle of first place teams. And in the National League Central, you see the St. Louis Cardinals now two and a half back. They've lost this afternoon in Baltimore. That was a 10-3 final. The Dodgers up three and a half on the San Francisco Giants. Brewers trying to keep pace ahead of the Pittsburgh Pirates who are underway against the Padres tonight. Donnie Ball game, Don Mattingly, fourth year as the skipper of the Los Angeles Dodgers. And his ball club has the best record in the National League. 66 and 51, the largest lead as well. And take a look at his Associated Bank batting order. D. Gordon leads off. Yasiel Puig hits second. Adrian Gonzalez at first base. Had a home run last night. In the middle, it's Matt Kemp, Carl Crawford, and Juan Uribe. And the bottom three, A.J. Ellis, a Wisconsin resident. Miguel Rojas will start at short. Hanley Ramirez still out with an injured side. 
And Zach Grinke on the mound. Baseball's highest paid player against one of baseball's lowest paid players. <laughs> Mike Fires just up from AAA making his first start of the season. That's a pretty good one already. You're uh, in rare form. Yeah, yeah. made it. it Mike Fires made his major league debut against the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium a couple of years ago. He's 2 0 against LA in two games. One of them starts. And you can see he's made four appearances, all four out of the bullpen. Pretty good numbers for Fires making start number one as Matt Garza nurses that oblique problem. He's on the disabled list. 29 year old right hander, and he has earned his shot back in the big leagues this year. Fires is dominating AAA. Let's take you back a couple of years. ATT Uber's rewind. This was Mike Fires' first career start in the major leagues, and what a performance it was against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Back on May 29th, 2 1 victory in that game. He went seven innings and one earned run, and I remember that day well. That was uh, a day when Jonathan Lucroy was uh, injured and Maldonado got to start behind the plate. And those two were a nice combination. Lucroy's back in there today. And we were wondering about Fire's nerves back then. And I think now he's a little more settled. He's had some success in the big leagues and he is up in a big spot in the Brewers' rotation. His first pitch is in there for a strike, and away we go. Man, it's going to be important for Fires to be able to be in control of those nerves. You never know. A little bit of butterflies, I would imagine. The Brewers are in the midst of a pennant race, and Fires a control pitcher. He has to have his wits about him out there. Fires in the starting rotation for Matt Garza, who is on the disabled list with an oblique injury. First time all year the Brewers have put a starting pitcher on the DL. And the Brewers have used now seven starting pitchers. Fires being the seventh. D. Gordon at the top spot in the order once again. A guy you have to keep off the base pads. He leads the National League in stolen bases. Yesterday Gordon was one for five. Dodgers feel like they're back at full strength minus Hanley Ramirez tonight as fire zips one in for strike two. Yeah, Brewers did a nice job keeping Gordon and Puig off the bases in yesterday's ball game between the number one and two hitters. They only reached two times Gordon with an infield hit and Puig with a walk. Top two combined to go one for nine. Yeah, a little jam shot fires will flip it over to Reynolds and that's how the night begins for Mike Fires. Well, let's check out your Menards Brewers defense. We came on the air talking about the defense here today. They've committed one error in the last five games. Davis back in left field. It was far yesterday. He had a big night offensively. Gomez and Braun in the outfield. Ramirez, Segura, Scooter, Jeanette, Mark Reynolds, Jonathan Lucroy back behind home plate. Hanging the sides for Mike Fires tonight. And there is Marty Foster calling the balls and strikes this evening. John Tumpain, Rob Drake, and Joe West on the base pass. The crew chief is Joe West, who had the plate last night. Yasiel Puig takes ball one. Puig's first appearance at Miller Park yesterday and was 0 for 4, had a walk and a strikeout. If you weren't with us last night, the Brewers beat the Dodgers 9 to 3. It was a very tight ball game until the end. As a matter of fact, the Brewers were trailing going into the bottom of the seventh inning by a score of 3 to 2 after the Dodgers had a rally in the seventh. And then Milwaukee scored four runs in the seventh, three in the eighth, and a 9 3 victory. Some shoddy Dodger defense last night, specifically from their shortstop, Justin Turner. Who uh, entered the game as a pitch hitter and then remained in defensively, and that cost him in a big way last night. Yeah, third on the depth chart as far as shortstops go for the Dodgers. Hanley Ramirez had to leave in the first inning. Rojas was pinch hit for, so Turner insert ended up costing the game. Winning pitcher last night was Jeremy Jeffress. And the Brewers were able to. Steal game one and now trying to make it back to back wins over the Dodgers. 
And a swing and a miss. Fires strikes out Yasiel Puig. Two up, two down. Well, the command very good so far for Mike Fires. He's able to keep that baseball on the corners. There you see the four seam fastball grip and able to catch the corner with it. And Puig uh, swings right through it. A pretty good pitch to hit. Had a little bit of the plate. Has some good zip on that fastball, but it's only 90 to 91 miles an hour. Now, hitters will tell you that Fires hides the ball well, that straight over the top delivery, and they say they pick it up right at the last second. That's why he's able to get that average fastball by you. So, two gone. Here is Adrian Gonzalez. Tough hitter Gonzalez had a good night last night. Three hits and three at bats. Drove in two runs. Had a home run, a solo shot, and an RBI single. Also walked. Gonzalez comes in with a batting average of 264. That's a bit down by Gonzalez's standards. But he does have 16 homers, 76 runs batted in. He is second in the National League in RBIs and has always been a tough hitter at Miller Park, hitting nearly 400 at Miller Park with eight home runs in 22 games. Rolls over one. Reynolds will scoop it up. Fires on the other end, and that's a great start. For Mike Fires. One, two, three, the Dodgers go in order. Brewers coming up. Johnson got the state fair going on the Brewers wrapping up a homestand here this weekend with the Dodgers today and tomorrow here's Renneke's Associated Bank batting order tonight. It's Gomez Lucroy and Braun at the top Aramis Ramirez Scooter Jeanette Chris Davis in the middle and then Renneke has Reynolds in the starting lineup tonight Segura back in there batting eighth and then rounding it out is fires. That's the lineup that will face Zach Grinke. And coming off a loss his last time out, Rock, he did not pitch Grinky like against the Angels in his last start. A five to nothing loss, and Zach has lost three of his last four decisions, but overall having a terrific season, 12 and 7. And those 12 victories good for seventh in the National League. He's seventh in earned run average and third in strikeouts, a typical Zach Grinky season. One of the dominant pitchers in the game, Zach Grinky, a former Cy Young Award winner. Carlos Gomez leading off, taking a first pitch fastball from Grinky. Normally, Gomez is a pretty good bet to swing at that first pitch. And a breaking ball swung on and missed. Grinky has them all, and he'll throw them in any count, and that's what makes him so great. Power fastball, he can sink it. Got a great slider, a curveball. And just for fun, every now and then, he'll try to throw his curveball. In the 60 mile an hour range. So a change up once in a while. Yeah, I mean, he's got all the pitches. That's why he's been so good. 27 and 11 in two years with the Dodgers. That's pretty good. That's what you call earning your money. He's been solid. 15 game winner last year. 
ended up with a 2.63 earned run average in 28 starts. And a swing and a miss makes it two and two on Gomez. Yep, and he will get it up there pretty good if he needs to. 94 95 from time to time and has excellent command. Doesn't walk many, only 29 walks and 158 strikeouts this year. That's over five to one strikeouts to walks. Got him. Gomez down on strikes. And Grinke opens up with a K. Check out your Dodgers defense brought to you by Menards. Crawford, Twig, and Kemp. Very athletic outfield for these L.A. Dodgers. You got your rebate. Rojas getting a start. Hanley Ramirez has an oblique problem. D. Gordon and Adrian Gonzalez. A.J. Ellis back behind home plate. Zach Greinke has not made an error since July of 2010. Mm -hmm. That's how good he has been defensively. Yeah, he is like having an extra shortstop on the field. He was a shortstop. As an amateur player growing up in Florida. Jonathan Lucroy back in the two spot tonight. Lucroy was out of the lineup yesterday. A little tightness in the hamstring. Ian Segura did not start in yesterday's game. Both of them back in there, and the Brewers are going to need all the bats they have. Yeah, so two year starters out of the starting lineup yesterday for Milwaukee. And you get a win. That's a bonus. Nice job yesterday by. Ilion Herrera at shortstop. You had Parra out and left. He got a big base hit late in the ball game. Ron Rampke getting all of his players involved. Herrera had a couple of sparkling defensive plays in last night's game. The former Dodger buckled his knees. A breaking ball in there for a strike. One and two. Grinky pitched here at Miller Park last year. It was his worst start of the season. And it was just his second start after coming back from the disabled list. You might remember it was a bench clearing brawl between the Dodgers and the Padres last year in April. And Grinky missed a month of the season. And a fractured collarbone as Lucroy turns one around and that's going to fall a base hit. Crawford in the tough Sunfield in left and I'm not sure he ever saw that ball. Yeah, I, don't th I think you're right. He didn't see it. Because if he did he probably would have been able to come in and made the catch right now the left fielder is having a tough time with that son. So that's a pretty good spot to hit the baseball right now if you can. Everybody else is in pretty good shape. Check out Crawford. He doesn't even budge. He doesn't move. Never sees it. If he does he's going to be able to make that catch. The sun setting through the panels above the first base grand stand and the uh, terrace level. And it's going to be a half hour or so, and that's going to be a treacherous field over there. So here's Ryan Braun. Brewers with a runner at first and one out in the first. Been a tough homestand for Braun. He has just two hits, had one of them last night, two for 15 on the current homestand. But he comes in among league leaders in RBIs. Braun has 66 driven in this season. Sixty six RBIs good enough for seventh in the league. And a shot to short Rojas to second D Gordon to first. And Grinky is out of the first inning. It goes six four three. Scoreless, we're underway as we head to the second.
no score between the Brewers and the Dodgers as we head to the top of the second and talking with bullpen coach Lee Tunnel about Mike Fires and the 2012 run that he went on when he made his debut against the Dodgers said he was able to succeed because it was his first time that the league was seeing him but he was also able to mix speeds on his pitches he had tremendous command and now two years later he knows now what it is to stay consistent he mentioned the 11 quality starts that he's had in Nashville certainly the strikeout to walk ratio numbers of uh, uh, nearly 130 strikeouts to just 17 walks and of course fires is here because Matt Garza is on the disabled list with a strained left oblique Ron Renneke saying today they have been pushing him on his exercises but he has not started throwing yet nor is there a date yet for him to start throwing and uh, right now he said I'm assuming that he will be ready to go in 15 days but the team taking a wait and see approach and that's a smart thing to do and uh, hopefully you can uh Hold your head above water, and that's why these starts for Mike Fires are so important. Every pitching staff in the big leagues has to dip into their minor league system, get into their depth a little bit for the most part. And Fires gets his turn here in August. And it's always good to have a guy you can call on from the minor leagues that's had success at the major league level. That was a couple of years ago. Fires, when he first came up, he had a stretch where he was about as good as it gets out there in the mound in the National League. Matt Kemp leads off for the Dodgers. And there's a curveball in there for a strike. Fires just dominating the Pacific Coast League. His, Sophia mentioned his strikeouts to walks. His ratio was 7.6 strikeouts to one. That was his strikeout to walk ratio. That is extraordinary. And a swing and a miss, and he's racked up a couple of Ks here tonight. Matt Kemp and Yasiel Puig going down swinging thus far. Yeah, throwing a lot of strikes down in the minor leagues and not giving up many hits. Only 80 hits allowed in 102 and a third innings. And Matt Kemp chasing one out of the strike zone. High fastball. And just a refresher on Mike Fires. He likes to get the swing and miss on the high fastball. The changeup down and the big curveball. We haven't seen the changeup yet. Not a bad time to pitch right now in the twilight. Tough to see. There's a shot foul. Carl Crawford just pulls one foul. Combination of deceptive delivery for fires and being able to throw strikes. Work ahead of batters. Crawford had a hit last night. Base hit to the opposite field. He's a 237 hitter this year. And the number's significantly down for Crawford. Dodgers acquired him via trade with the Red Sox. A lot of star power in this Dodger lineup. Crawford is one of them, even though he's having a down season. Scooter Jeanette takes care of Crawford and two up and two down for Fires. He's retired five in a row to start. So two gone and it'll be Juan Uribe. Hey Uribe with no band-aid on his nose now. Had one last night. The strangest hit by pitch I've ever seen. <laughs> that must have been like the, the edge of a seam. Went across his nose. Fortunate it didn't catch him flush but he was backing out and it just clipped. The end of his nose just barely so much so that nobody even thought including the home plate umpire that it actually hit him. But. He uh, convinced Joe West that it did had a little blood there and. He was on his way to first base. Oh and to the count. Rock was talking about the. Start of a big league career for Mike fires at least as a starter. Back in 2012. And it's not an, an overstatement to say this. He was one of the best pitchers in the game yeah. for about six weeks. Could not touch him. Earned run average under two for a good long stretch. His first 12 starts of his major league career, he had an ERA of 1.82. That was back in that 12 season. He ended up 9 and 10 that year with a 3.74 ERA. Last year was a tough year for fires. Not only 
Was he uh, slightly injured, not feeling 100%, actually had a broken arm pitching in the minor leagues, and he also had tragedy in his life. He lost his mother. She passed away after a, a long battle. He's back on his game this year, though. And he's got six in a row to start this one against the Dodgers. Park. As we head to the bottom of the second inning, no score at the ballpark. Hey, Hank, the ballpark puck was, pup has been added to the Brewers bobblehead lineup. All fans in Miller Park to see the Brewers host the Reds on Saturday, September 13th. We'll get their very own bobble Hank. That's courtesy of West Bend. Visit Brewers.com for tickets. Bobble Hank. That's a that's the dog that you can't win a stare down against. Can you ever win a stare down against any dog? It depends. Have I don't you, think with Hank. Have he's you ever pretty, done it? He's a pretty tough dog. You don't have a dog, do you? I like other people's dogs. Ramos Ramirez swings away at the first pitch, bounces out. And one gone here in the second. They look at you adoringly. It's kind of like other people's boats. Like, I like your boat. You don't have to gas it up. I mean, we take care of all that, mm -hmm. clean her up. Exactly. Other people's swimming pools. Yeah, they got a big party down on B Dock tonight. Oh, is that right? I want to say hello to everybody. <laughs> Robert Gord. I'm, I'm sure they're watching. Well, they do. You should see some of the stuff they got down there. They got satellite dishes. Too bad you can't be a part of it. We're glad you've decided to join us here. I'd tonight. rather be here. <laughs> Scooter Jeanette takes a ball. Did you have a little fun out at? Um, at the dock today, the B dock, yeah, McKinley Marina, a good time, yeah. Spent a few hours down there, you know, floated around, you know, went out on the pontoon and had uh, had some lunch. Some of the Riverside establishments. A little flare's gonna fall. Spinner Jeanette with the second Brewers hit, both singles. Luke Roy and Jeanette with base hits off Zach Grinky, and a man on with one out for Chris Davis. And yeah, we don't know how fortunate we are to, to live in a town like Milwaukee. You know, you got Lake Michigan and you got all the festivals. And, but getting through the downtown area, through that waterway, the Menominee River. Yeah. It's cool. It, it is amazing. It's a lot of fun. People don't realize how good it is down there. A great time to be in Wisconsin and right here in Milwaukee this time of year. State Fairs hopping drove past uh, there last night on the way out of the ballpark. Yeah, we're not too far from the lakefront downtown Milwaukee and about you know, just a few miles. Good day for the sailboats. A little bit of wind, a little chop on the lake. Chris Davis with a big cut fouls it off. Davis glad to be back in the lineup here tonight. It was Gerardo Parra who started yesterday, and Parra 
has made some big contributions in his last couple of starts. He had a two RBI single in last night's game that stretched the Brewers lead. And then had a decisive home run earlier in the week on Tuesday. Ron Renicki says it is not a platoon by no means. There are some matchups that he likes with Para at the plate. And they've just kind of fallen in place here the last few days. But Renicki was emphatic about the fact that Chris Davis is his left fielder. And Davis has been nursing a couple of little nagging injuries, a calf injury, which knocked him out of a game last week in St. Louis. And he's had a little tightness in his left elbow, his non throwing elbow. And it's good to get Parra in the mix. And I think Gerardo now feels like he's part of the club and he's made contributions already. That's what it takes. Yeah, par a tremendous defender. I mean making some great plays in the outfield good throwing arm. He's been productive Davis a couple of days ago at double in an RBI. It's all good. The Brewers have a right handed heavy lineup typically only one lefty in the lineup here. This evening against Grinky that's Jeanette. And Davis launches one that had the sound that is way back and there she goes. Chris Davis a two run home run. It did have the sound didn't it. The crack of the bat Chris Davis a lot of his home runs lately have come in the right center. Check out this swing. Fastball from Grinky up out over the plate and look at Davis. Waits on it, puts a good swing on it, and no ballpark's going to hold that. Big fly to right center, so the Brewers get an early two to nothing lead. Power ball home run number 19 for Chris Davis. Now tied atop the ball club with the man at the plate, Mark Reynolds. Well, Davis just continues to impress. 19 homers, 58 runs batted in now. That had to feel good. Just aren't many right handed batters in the game that can go out in that direction with that kind of force. As they used to say, the ball gets small fast when Davis puts one on the barrel. You know, when you hit it on the barrel like that, the sweet spot, you don't feel anything, no vibration whatsoever. And when they hit them, these home run hitters, they know. They know they're gone. To an O to Reynolds. Just missed that one as he skies one a mile high. Good thing the roof is open tonight. That is in fair territory for the out. The second out of the inning. Time now for you to tweet your photo to us using hashtag WISFANPHOTO. Have a chance to show it in an upcoming broadcast. All brought to you by AT&T. You make it through the gatekeeper. Producer Brad Weimer. Tonight's game being directed by Mark Vittorio Vito and our great crew here in Milwaukee. There's a strike to Gene Segura. Well, Segura day off yesterday, a maintenance day they call it. Little tightness in his quad, and uh, was in need of a day off. He plays a lot. Very rarely do you see Segura get a day off. But the addition of Elian Herrera to the big league roster affords Renicky that opportunity every now and then. Yeah, it doesn't hurt that Elian has been swinging the bat well and has been playing a good shortstop. He's been impressive his second go round with the team. Talking about Herrera. Taking the pressure off of Segura, giving him a day off once in a while. It's going to keep him fresh. And Segura hitting just 238, four home runs, 26 driven in. And he waves and misses a pitch in the dirt. Segura is out. So the second strikeout for Grinky, but not before Chris Davis, the big chill. 
goes yard deep right center and it's two nothing great crew as we head to the third. Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. And by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. Off and running here in Milwaukee. And the Brewers and the Dodgers head to the third inning. Chris Davis with a two-run home run off Zach Greinke. Brewers take an early lead tonight. Mike Fires is retired six in a row with three strikeouts. And he'll face the bottom of the order. A.J. Ellis, Miguel Rojas, and Zach Grinke coming up. They want to send out hellos and best wishes and heal fast wishes to our buddy Lou Montgomery, who works as a, an usher up here in the press box. It's kind of the heavyweight, you know, kind of the security, the strong man up here in the press box. Yeah, making sure that uh, you've got the proper authority to come in here. Otherwise, he'll take you down. Well, Lou uh, injured his shoulder and is uh, recovering at his home, and we wish him well. We miss miss Lou being around here. Yeah, come on back quickly, Lou. We'll have your seat waiting for you. Swing and a miss by Ellis. Quickly, 0-2 on the Dodger catcher. Fires throwing a lot of strikes early. 25 pitches, 19 of them for strikes. And is looking for his fourth strikeout already to the first seven batters he's faced. A.J. Ellis, Racine resident. Been fighting a knee injury, knocked him out of the lineup a couple of days last week. Did not start yesterday. Didn't play yesterday. Drew but Butera got the call in yesterday's game. Ellis back in there tonight. It's only his 56th game this year. Having a difficult time staying in the lineup. And you figure he'll be in the lineup tomorrow with Kershaw on the mound. He was behind the plate for Kershaw's no hitter this season. Very good defensive catcher. Had a good season offensively a year ago. I think some of the uh, injuries that he's been battling this year have kept his offense down a bit. Two and two the count. And Ellis on a hop to Segura. Nice play. Little Matador action. And Segura takes care of Ellis. To make it seven in a row for Fires. 6 3 on the putout. 
And a little bit off the end of the bat and Segura realizing that the catcher's running. Taking some time and able to make the play easily. Able to play it off to the side and a good throw to first base. Golf clap from Kyle Loesch, who pitched well last night. Did not factor in the decision. He left with the lead after six innings. Nice comeback from his start against the Cardinals. Got roughed up. Guys, these uh, veteran pitchers, they have short memories. They don't let one outing leak into the next. Loesch went six, one earned run. ERA at 333 now. Kind of had to grind his way through a couple of innings last night, did Loesch? Went over 100 pitches to go six. The Brewers uh, went through their bullpen, starting with Rob Wooten, who was sent back to Triple A today to make room for fires. Zach Duke, Jeremy Jeffers got the win. Will Smith. Pitched well last night and then Kensler finished it. I think Jeremy Jeffers has been a breath of fresh air down in that bullpen mm -hmm. taking the pressure off some of the other guys not having to pitch them as much and I think that's going to have a positive effect going forward. So he's been good as since he's come up coming in throwing hard throwing strikes. Oh, and Ron Renneke has been walking that very thin line of trying to build confidence and yet put a pitcher in a spot where you as a club need him. I mean you need a guy to step up and pitch in those late innings when you have a lead and Jeffers has been thrown into the fire. I think Renneke has been a little more cautious with him than with most because he just got here and hasn't really been in those kind of situations much. So you're trying to go through the season and build that confidence up. I've been getting a, a lot of questions just walking around the park and some fans are saying how come Ron keeps taking Jeffers out say he strikes out a batter and he comes out of the game and I think I asked Ron that today and that's that's the reason he gave and it's a pretty good reason by the manager because he knows he needs Jeremy Jeffers and for a player who really hasn't ha had a whole lot of success in the big leagues confidence is everything right now yeah you, you stick him out there for the next three and he gets knocked around it could affect him down the road and plus no, you, you put him in there for an inning, maybe two thirds of an inning. You can use him three days in a row. I mean, two innings, and you might not be able to use him the next day. And he's been so good, so effective for the Brewers so far that you want to be able to have him to you just about every night. Of course, you can't do that, but you have to really choose your spots as to when to extend him and when not to. Two and two, and Miguel Rojas fouls it back. Hangs tough. Count remains at two balls and two strikes. Well, it's not easy to, to go through a little turmoil in the bullpen when you're in a pennant race and the Brewers are in first place and you're this late in the season. You'd like to have all of the roles defined. Seventh inning, eighth inning, long man, setup man, however that works. There's a call. Strike three. Fires. Rings the bell. And Rojas will take a seat. That's strikeout number four for Mike Fires. Yeah, Dodgers just not seeing the baseball very well from Fires so far. Yeah, that one catching plenty of the plate right at the knees. And Luke Corey holding it nicely for Marty Foster, the home plate umpire. And we'll see what happens second time through after Zach Greinke gets his at bat. You know, these big league hitters, they make adjustments quickly. And Grinky, the pitcher, a very good hitter, as you remember from his days in Milwaukee. Terrific athlete. He runs well and he runs hard. And he fields his position well. Complete player. So he's a guy you got a game plan a little bit around as a pitcher. Fires missing. Two balls, no strikes. Grinky has six hits this year. He's hitting 140, but a career 208 hitter, and he's hit three home runs in his career. There's ball three. I mean, he's a good hitting pitcher, but he's not that good. I don't think he's pitching around him. 
Looked like that second pitch was a pretty good pitch called low. Almost the same pitch that was thrown to Rojas when he struck out. That one's in there. Grinky and fires teammates rotation mates. In 2012 that was Grinky's last year in Milwaukee traded that year to the Angels. Zach's big year in Milwaukee was 2011. Brewers acquired him via trade. The offseason prior to the 11 season he and Sean Markham. One of the two new additions in the rotation. Came at a heavy price the Brewers gave up four big prospects. Jeremy Jeffress was one of those prospects actually. Grinky won 16 games in that division winning season. And there's ball four. Boy, that didn't miss by much. And that is the first blemish on Mike Fire's line tonight. After retiring eight straight, a walk to the pitcher, Grinky, with two away. Sometimes, you know, all you have to do is throw strikes, it becomes difficult to do. Just miss that outside corner. Top of the order. Here's D. Gordon. There's a strike with a fastball. Gordon. Bounced out his first time up right back to the mound. First time through the batting order the Dodgers go 0 for 8 with a walk. Four strikeouts for fires. Back up the middle Segura is there and he'll go to the bag for the out. To retire the side. And a scoreless inning for Fires. 2 nothing crew. Brewers coming up. Grinky Brewers lead 2 nothing. Always good to see Zach back in Milwaukee and the ever quotable Zach Grinky would always tell you exactly what he thought. Very honest. One of his more famous quotes. How about a flashback? And the question was about Zach and Miller Park and why he was so comfortable. Remember this? Uh, you're comfortable at home because uh, I mean you wake up in your bed. You don't have to go anywhere to get your breakfast and coffee and sometimes in the hotels they have bad coffee or something so you have to go do other stuff and then and then you get to come to the field in your car. <laughs> <laughs> a 
and there were many, many more where that he came from. He just loved messing with people, didn't he? <laughs> he see did. the look on his face. He couldn't even hold, keep a straight <laughs> face saying that. And then you get to come to the park in your car. In other words, I don't know. I just play the <laughs> pitch well here. I don't know. You tell me. I he's, like the coffee here in Milwaukee. He's great. He was so much fun to listen to. Can't say I had a whole lot of conversations with Zach Grinke during his time here, but he certainly was very quotable. He only spoke on game day after he pitched, and uh, that was always a lot of fun on Brewers Live post game during the Grinke years here in Milwaukee. Doesn't have much to say to anyone out of uniform. Let's just put it that way. Very sociable, very likable in the clubhouse. Guys loved him, but you know, outside the lines. People coming in the clubhouse with microphones. He just didn't like it. Mike fires leads off the Brewer pitcher. You know, he takes a strike. Now the players used to say that Grinky would be this kind of effervescent live wire fun guy joked around a lot and right up until the clubhouse doors open for the media. And then uh, he would retreat into his Grinky shell. And that's the Grinky that uh, from a public perspective that we all saw. And he uh, made sure he kept that image. And kept those lines drawn pretty clearly. Kind of a guy to himself but uh, I guess you can get away with that when you have the success that Grinky's had in his career. And fires is down on strikes. Back to back case for Grinky gives him three. A Saturday August 23rd the Brewers square off against the division rival Pittsburgh Pirates and the first 20,000 fans 21 and older will get a free Brewers umbrella courtesy of Potawatomi Hotel Casino for tickets call 414 902 4000 we'll go to Brewers.com top of the order Gomez back up they strike out victim in the first. Well, let's hope the Brewers didn't offer up any of the good Miller Park coffee to Zach Grinke before the game today. They probably didn't drive to the ballpark. Had to go out and get breakfast. There's a shot to short. Rojas backs up on it. Long throw is in time. Nice play. And Miguel Rojas, he can pick it over there at shortstop. He knew he had to be quick with it. You know, flat footed, a sidearm flip over to first base. A little bit off the end of the bat. And Rojas gets his man on a very quick throw to first base. Two up and two down. One of my favorite Zach Grinky stories. We were sitting on the bus once. We were in Cincinnati, and there was a prize fight a pay-per-view prize fight the night before so this was a Sunday it was a Saturday night fight that a lot of the players watched after the game and Niger Morgan was on the team and there was just a lot of hooting and hollering on the bus about this fight you know and and Grinky's pitching that and, day. And Grinky was pitching that day and it was loud and guys were having fun and they're talking about the fight and Grinky stopped the bus and got off the bus <laughs> and walk to the ballpark yeah, as he did. <laughs> he couldn't take the noise anymore. Right. <laughs> and not even the headphones could keep it quiet for no, him. Oh, he just he said, you know, he evaluated the situation. He wasn't going to ask everybody else to get off the bus or be quiet or be quiet. So he just got off the bus and got into his grinky world. And then we were driving the bus. I mean, we were on the bus driving to the ballpark, and there he was just strolling along. Luke Croy, another line drive to left, almost a carbon copy. And Jonathan Lucroy has two hits today, two for two against Greinke. That's the fourth hit of the ball game for the Brook Crew. And both of them coming on hanging sliders from Greinke. Well, Greinke making some mistakes with his off-speed pitch. Well, you see maybe one or two curveballs, no changeups. So basically, fastball slider from Greinke. And Lucroy is right on that slider tonight. So Lucroy is aboard with two outs. And Braun coming up. Who bounced into a 6-4-3 double play his last time up. Hit the ball sharply, but right at Rojas at short, and it turned out to be an easy double play.
Ryan Braun. Now one for four career against Grinky. Of course, I hadn't seen a whole lot of Zach. The player with the most at bats against Zach Grinky is Lyle Overbay, who's not in the starting lineup tonight. And he's had some success too. 346 hitter Overbay with three homers. Gives you an idea of the play of Mark Reynolds lately. Renicky going with the hot hand. And Mark Reynolds has five home runs since the All Star break, so he gets the start tonight. Always good to have interchangeable parts if you're Ron Renicky. You got one left handed first baseman, left handed hitter, one right handed hitter. Bouncer to third. Monteribe fires across in time to get Braun, and that will retire the side. Two nothing Brewers, three in the books. And we head to the fourth with the Dodgers coming up. Yasiel Puig will lead off. Fox Sports Supports is proud to collaborate with Stand Up to Cancer, a groundbreaking initiative created to accelerate innovative cancer research that gets new therapies to patients quickly in order to save lives now. For more information, we encourage you to visit foxsportsupports.com. Good night so far. Mike Fires with three shutout on the board has four strikeouts and one walk retired the first eight batters he faced and the Brewers with two runs on four hits against Grinky and one of the game's bright young stars stepping in Yasiel Puig who remains hitless in this series at 0 for 5. Puig a strikeout victim in the first. One of those guys early in his career that is very hot or sometimes goes into stretches where he just doesn't get many hits and you hope to catch him when he's in one of those stretches where he's having a rough time. Muscles out and out to Scooter Jeanette and there is the first out takes a big hack. He's got that bait bat in and out of the strike zone very quickly. And it's all about timing for Puig. He's 0 for 2. Here tonight, that'll bring up Adrian Gonzalez. By the way, Rock, you see he threw out the first pitch. Vanilla ice. Vanilla ice in the house. Which reminded me of our Wranglers and Rappers road trip. <laughs> Look at Eddie Cedar photo bombing there. And there's no real photo bomb like an Ed Cedar photo bomb. You know, it was Eddie's birthday yesterday? I did, I did know that. I sent him a birthday wish and a card and uh, some nice gifts. Did you? What'd you send him? Nothing. 
Yeah, a lot of. We sent him a lot of stuff. I sent him a nice text after the game. <laughs> Remember the Wranglers and Rappers road trip? Right. And Lyle Overbay went as Vanilla Ice. And uh, remember he shaved the lines on his head and everything. I so remember the whole thing. That yeah. was a nice little get together before the game with Overbay and Vanilla Ice. Are they buddies? Well, they are now. They're like kindred spirits. I'm not sure if I'm uh, familiar with any of his stuff. Oh, you're familiar with Ice Ice Baby. I mean, that was as Gonzalez turns that one around. That is way back. Adrian Gonzalez with a home run. And the first hit for the Dodgers is a home run by Gonzalez, his second in as many games. Number 17 for Gonzalez. It's two to one, Brewers. Yep, home run yesterday in the sixth inning was the first run on the board for L.A. Well, the two or four seam fastball up in the zone, out over the plate, and Gonzalez not very often is going to miss. A pitch in that location sends it way out of here. Second deck in right field. And the bubbles are out early. He hit a bomb into right field last night as well. Here's Matt Kemp, and there is strike one. Gonzalez has been a tough out in this series. He now has four hits in five trips to the plate. Including a double and two home runs. And now three runs batted in. That was the ninth career home run for Adrian Gonzalez at Miller Park in just 23 games. Nine homers, 23 RBIs, and 23 Miller Park contests. And most of that coming as a Padre. Man, he's something he can hit. Almost hit one out down the line in right yesterday. That was a double in the first inning and then hit a home run to right later in the game. Matt Kemp a strikeout victim in the second and he lines one on a hop. What a play by Ramirez throws him out. Man, Man. Right. What a play. All right, that is sweet. Look at him laughing. He's not sure how he caught it, but he did. Sometimes the baseball catches you. I think that was the case here. Top spin, one hopper. Ramirez is able to get the glove on it to get the out. Oh, look out. Oh, that's a beauty. Good wow. play by Aramis Ramirez. And that ball was smoked. Well, the, the great hands that make him such a good hitter. Certainly help his cause defensively. Doesn't have great range, but typically what he can get to, he makes plays on. He's got a strong, accurate throwing arm. And once he got that one in the glove, that was it. What a play. The Brewers are racking up some defensive gems on this homestand. Yeah, talking about defense when we came on the air tonight. Add that one to the highlight reel. Ramirez is playing about as good a third base as he has in his career. Final year of his contract, and he's hitting well right now as well. Crawford in the center field. Gomez came in, now goes back. And the Brewers will walk off the field with one run in. Home run by Gonzalez. Great play by Ramirez. 2 1 crew.
and Adrian Gonzalez. We head to the bottom of the fourth. Our carsoup.com trivia tonight. How many players in MLB history have won the Cy Young Award in both the NL and the AL? It's a good question. Grinkies came in the American League in 09 and as a member of the Royals. Brewers are on a Cy Young Award run here on this homestand. Starting with Lincecum and then Jake Peavy. You got Grinky tonight and Clayton Kershaw tomorrow. So far so good against the Cy Young Award winners. Ramirez leads off after a beautiful play at third base in the top of this frame. Arama setting on a 10 game hitting streak. And it is a hard streak. He's hitting 475. 19 hits and 40 at bats. And in the 10 game streak, he has eight runs batted in. Yeah, he's been the run producer for the Brewers right now that he was back in April. Remember how hot he was in April coming up with all those big two out base hits. He's been that guy again. Matchup of National League All Star teammates. Ramirez and Grinky. Now Ramirez was quite moved by the fan voting. First time in his career he's been voted in by the fans as a starter at third base. And you start to put a Ramos Ramirez career numbers together. And he is. Among the best and most productive hitting third baseman of all time. He's starting to climb a lot of lists in that category. And says he has no designs on slowing down. Made an announcement a couple of weeks ago that he will definitely come back and play and wants to come back and play third base. In the final year of his three year contract. Well, he got the hands in on that one. That's fair. Ramirez down the left field line will be held to a single. Just whip the bat through the zone and a base hit for Ramirez to start the fourth. Yeah, strong enough to muscle it out into shallow left field. Greinke able to get it on his hands with a two seamer. Once you pop those hips open, you don't let the hands drift out over the plate. And you're able to get enough of it to muscle it over the infield. Well, Ramirez does that well. First time the Brewers have had their leadoff hitter aboard. Extends the hitting streak to 11 for Aramis. Here's Scooter Jeanette. Two to one. Brewers lead the Dodgers as we play in the fourth. Scooter had a single his last time up. Cued one into center field and was on when Davis went deep. The Brewers have at least one hit in each of the first four innings against Greenkey tonight. Back to back hits in the second. Jeanette now batting 309 after his hit last time up. Would be inside the top 10 in the league in batting if he had enough at bats. Broken bat grounder. Grinky will start a 1 6 3 double play. They tried to pull a sinker away. Sometimes that happens when you have the movement like Grinky has in that two seam fastball away. About as easy as it gets. Grinky, we talked about. Hasn't made an error since 2010. July of 2010, his last error 
out there on the mound. Tremendous fielder. Two outs. Here's Davis. Shot to short. Miguel Rojas. And that'll be a quick inning for Grinky. Brewers get a leadoff single, but a double play and a ground out. And we are through four at Miller Park. Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Fox Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. And by Miller Lite, now in the original can, it's Miller time. Top of the fifth, Dodgers Brewers battle of first place ball clubs. Los Angeles leading the San Francisco Giants in the National League West. The Brew Crew up a game and a half on the Pirates to start play today. The Cardinals have already lost today. They've lost back to back games in Baltimore. Pirates are hosting San Diego tonight. Two to one Brewers. A rebate on the first pitch. A bouncer to Segura. One pitch, one out for Mike Fires. Yeah, and that brings us to tonight's time of the game winner Baron Brooks Sports Bar in Spring Green. They call the Brewers in the next 24 hours. They get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game. So for courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. Baron Brooks Sports Bar in Spring Green. Nice alliteration there. Rolls off the tongue. We welcome all of those from Baron Brooks. Got a great crowd here tonight at Miller Park on a Saturday. Yeah, Brewers going over the two million mark in attendance last night. Mm, that's something. One of five teams in the National League. Brewers fans should be proud of themselves the way they fill the ballpark each and every night. I don't think these players don't recognize that. They love it here. AJ Ellis takes one in off the plate. Two and oh the count. The place to be in the summer in Milwaukee, the beloved Brewers. And it's even more special when the Brewers are in a pennant race. Get your tickets now. Coming down to the final two months of the season. Brewers are going to have. A nice home schedule in September. August is a tough month. Some tough road trips, including two road trips out west. There's a strike, two and two on AJ Ellis. Yeah, Brewers go to Chicago after tomorrow's game here at Miller Park. Four in Chicago, three in Los Angeles. And then head home. 
And then right back to the West Coast, a San Diego, San Francisco road trip. Two balls, two strikes on the Dodger catcher. In the air to right. Easy for Braun. Two outs. They're underway in Pittsburgh tonight. San Diego has a 2 1 lead. Padres on top in the bottom of the fifth. Francisco Liriano pitching for the Pirates tonight. San Diego has Eric Stoltz on the mound. They played a close one last night, a 2 1 ball game. Padres were knocking at the door, but the Pirates hung on to win. And Mark Melanson picking up another save. Pirates certainly in the picture. As a matter of fact, Pittsburgh has the fourth best record in the National League. Dodgers have the best record. Los Angeles is 66 and 51. The Brewers are 64 and 52. One back of the loss column to the Dodgers. Brewers with a second best record. Then Washington, Pittsburgh, St. Louis, San Francisco. Bunched up pretty tight. It's going to be an interesting end of the season for the Brewers. When you look at the Brewers schedule once September 1st hits. It's all National League Central opponents except for the Miami Marlins. Marlins come in for a four game set. Other than that, Brewers going to be playing within the division. That's what you want. Teams you have to beat, you want to play them. Little jam shot roller out to Segura and Mike fires a one, two, three, fifth. Moving along here. Bottom of the fifth coming up. Brewers up two to one. your calendars for the final t-shirt Friday of 2014 and it's Friday August 22nd and the Brewers host the Pirates and all fans will get a free Brewers t-shirt courtesy of Quick Trip for tickets call 902 4000 to go to Brewers.com today there you go it's not that it's this one here nice kind of an abstract Brewers see the lines through it Kind of makes you feel there like you you're go. looking at it through maybe some uh, beer goggles. You were doing a great job with that. Thank you. I wanted you to have some some camera some solo camera time. I appreciate that. ISO time. Brought to you by Quick Trip. You do hug the camera, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Mark Reynolds. <laughs> he takes a strike. It's been a flurry of T-shirts, has it not? 
this year. It's oh, been an amazing yeah. promotion. That closet is home is at home is filled with T-shirts. Oh really? Yeah. I think some of those were meant to come my way. Double X's? I don't think yeah, so. I'd like them big like that. Reynolds' little half swing goes through, and Grinky's got him tied up a little bit. Oh, and to the count. Reynolds was out in front of one his last time up, hit a very high pop up. Oh, and two, the count. And that one's fouled away. Reynolds gets a start over Overbay. Not only has Mark hit the home runs and provided a lot of power, he and Davis tied for the club lead with 19 homers. But he's played great defense this year and made a superb play yesterday. And one of the reasons why the Brewers defense has been much better this year their first base play. And not just the plays that they make on ground balls but you know their footwork around the bag and. You know, the way they've been able to you know scoop. Throws in the dirt. It's been nice. Reynolds has been able to spell Ramirez over at third base. When Aramis was on the DL with a hamstring injury, Reynolds played a lot of third base and played well over there. It's been a nice piece. Non roster invitee to spring training. And is a home run away from another 20 homer season. Two and two. Well, Reynolds has given the Brewers exactly what they thought they were going to get when they signed him. At least offensively, I think they've been pleasantly surprised with his defense. That's been the surprise. Grinky deals a 2 2, and he strikes him out. Reynolds goes down swinging. Strikeout number four for Zach Grinky. First out here in the fifth. As promised earlier in the broadcast, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Don't forget to use the hashtag #WisFanPhoto. Comes to us from Kenny. Appreciate the photograph. It's all brought to you by AT&T. Eighth place hitter Gene Segura with one out. Over to Gonzalez. Grinky covers. Out number two. That one had to hurt a little. Right in on the hands. He's got some good movement as Grinky on that two seamer. You know, the arm side fastball, the arm side tail and sink. It's got more tail than it does sink. You see that way that baseball bores in on the hands of Segura and eats him up. Starts out about you know middle middle in and ends up off the inside corner. Two outs and it's Mike Fires looking for his first hit of the season. Fires was with the Brewers earlier this year, in the month of June, pitching out of the bullpen during that stretch. And a starter down in AAA. So he's been getting his at bats. He's not much of a hitter. Has three career hits at the big league level, three for 37. Grinky struck him out in the third. Down he goes. And Grinky, a one, two, three inning, adds two strikeouts and now has five. We go to the sixth.
Miller Park as the Brewers lead it 2-1 as we head to the sixth inning and the Milwaukee Brewers Community Involvement Initiative, known as the Community Achievers Award, recognizes residents throughout the state of Wisconsin each month during the season for displaying extraordinary efforts in their community. All adults and school-age children throughout the state are eligible to participate in the Community Achievers Program. And the Brewers Wives Mystery Bag event tonight was a great success. They sold out of more than 800 bags with autographed baseballs and all of those proceeds will go to the Next Door Foundation, which uh, provides educational services for kids. So congratulations to the Brewers Wives on that effort. Yeah, great job. We tip our hat to the Brewers Wives and got a big day tomorrow. The last game of the homestand tomorrow. Service Saros Day. Our Miller Lite What's on Tap. The Brewers and the Dodgers final game of the series. Jimmy Nelson against Cy Young Award winner Clayton Kershaw. And he's having a dominant year once again. 13 wins, a 1 8 2 ERA. And Jimmy Nelson will be ready to match up against Kershaw. You had a chance to talk to Jimmy today, did you, Sophia? Well, I didn't have a chance to talk with Jimmy, but Nelson will see Kershaw over his next two starts. And when Ron Renicki was asked how he thought the rookie would handle that challenge, he said that Nelson isn't focused on the opponent, that his focus is on the right thing, which is just continuing to do better. And he certainly wants to win. But more importantly, Renicki said he feels like he's giving the team a chance to win. He's figuring things out, locating his pitches got the right approach feels like each outing he's always just one inning or a batter away from really having a great outing and that's a, a big start for him tomorrow <laughs> Carlos <laughs> Gomez got a chuckle out of that one as Grinky swings out of his helmet yeah, that's going to be a good matchup yeah Nelson against Kershaw and it's an interesting contrast today I was uh, down on the field during batting practice watching Jimmy Nelson goes go through his steps a bouncer to Jeanette backs up on it takes the easy hop and there is out number one on a shattered bat. But Rock you know you can watch the body language personality of players Kershaw is like a free yeah. spirit fun loving guy bouncing around during team stretch and uh, you know he's just active and he's poking a lot of fun. Jimmy Nelson is all business. Yeah. I mean, this guy is. Well, you very serious. You would very expect that out of a young kid. I mean, he's just starting to, you know, find his way, starting to get that comfort level. He's very confident out there in the mound, and nothing wrong with that eye of the tiger. And he's going to have to be good tomorrow because Clayton Kershaw has won his last ten decisions, ten and zero in his last twelve starts. Remember, Kershaw had that forty-one inning scoreless streak. Going to be fun tomorrow. Yeah, it's one of the great pitchers. In the game now and uh, starting to stack up with some of the greats all time at this point of his career, Clayton Kershaw. Brewers have had success against aces and top line pitchers. They've got the lead on Grinky tonight. They had a great run on the last road trip, beating David Price and Adam Wainwright in back to back games. And Kershaw only four and three against the Brewers in his career in eight starts. So the Brewers have had some success against him. Although Kershaw beat him last year. Oh, and two to D. Gordon, third time through the batting order. And a two-one Brewers lead in the sixth. And Gordon lines one to left to base hit. So the National League's stolen base leader is aboard. And now the muscle coming up for Los Angeles. Yeah, third time through that batting order. Let's see what adjustments Mike Fires makes. He's been able to get his fastball by these Dodgers hitters first three two times through. Except of course for Gonzalez. First time through four strikeouts. Walk the pitcher Grinky. That home run by Adrian Gonzalez, the only run of the game for the Dodgers. Now two hits for Los Angeles. Fires takes a while to let it go. This is a stolen base opportunity, you would think, for D. Gordon, who has 51 steals this year. He's only been caught 12 times. Problem Gordon's having stealing bases is Yasiel Puig swinging early in the count behind him. Yeah, not allowing him to steal. He's not willing to take pitches. 
And a pitch out, and Gordon stays put. Yasiel Puig is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Popped up to second base his last time up. You don't want to spend too much time with that man at first base. Man at the plate, a, a ton of power. I'm going to try to be too quick with your delivery, make a mistake to Puig. Close. Oh, Gordon just back. Yeah, he was leaning. That ball was, that throw was a little bit lower. I think Reynolds is going to be able to slap the tag. Now they want Luke Croy to go out and talk to maybe get a peek, and it looks like he was able to get back. It's a nice tag by Reynolds. Just does get back, sliding to the outfield side of first base, giving that you know, a little bit more time to get back. Yeah, I can't see it on that replay. Renicki is on his way out of the dugout getting some applause. Now to John Tumpain, the first base umpire. That's well, close enough to get another look at it. It took Renicki a while to get out there, so he's going to give his replay crew a little bit of extra time to make a decision. And those are the signals. Jared Aaron saying too close to call. Yeah, too close, so the manager doesn't want to. Waste to challenge here. It's yeah. probably the best look at it. Lower throw and he's out. Boy, that's close. Then the fact that the leg of Reynolds kind of blocking the view on that angle. Well, because he was called safe, has to be clear and convincing evidence. And I'm not sure there was any there. But he has Gordon's attention. 1 and 0 to Puig. Well, if nothing else, the Brewers trying to take the starch out of the legs of Gordon. Get him diving back a few times. All these throws to first, the holds on the mound, pitch outs, these are all called. By the Brewer bench. Manager lets him know what he wants to do. There he goes. Shows bunt. Luke Roy's throw to second and the tag. He's out. Oh, what a great throw by Luke Croy. And I wonder if Don Maddox is going to take a look at this one. He asked Queen to step out to give his, his replay team an opportunity to take a look at it. Well, look at the transfer by Luke Croy and that throw right on the money. Yeah, but yep. they got him. He's got out. him high, but he he threw him out. Only the thirteenth time that he's been thrown out this year. So a good job by Luke Croy and Mike Fires giving Luke a chance because he kept a, kept an eye on him. Yeah, good job by both. And yeah, great work by our crew here. Great shots. Quick tag by Jeanette. Second out in the inning. And the pitch was a strike. So it's one and one on Puig. In the air to right. Another jam shot. Pop up. First baseman Mark Reynolds to make the play. Score to sitting again. Luke Roy with a great throw. Two to one our score. Brewers lead.
Park. We are headed to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Brewers and the Dodgers. And it's 2-1 Milwaukee. Trivia question tonight brought to you by Carsoup.com. How many players in MLB history have won the Cy Young Award in both the AL and the NL? Five is the answer. Roy Halladay, the last to do it. 2010, the year he threw the no-hitter in the postseason. Had a no-hitter during the regular year as well that year. Won it as a member of the Blue Jays and then the Phillies. Clemens, Randy Johnson, Pedro Martinez, and Gaylord Perry. String of Hall of Fame pitchers. Carlos Gomez turns on one on the first pitch, and that is fair and hit the foul pole. A home run for Gomez. Like a bullet out of here. Carlos Gomez makes it three to one. Number 18 on the season for Gomez. Uh, he's something else, that guy. It was a curveball, a first pitch curveball that Greggy tried to get over for a strike, but Gomez wasn't going to let it go. Question was, was it going to be fair? Hits the foul pole and hit that foul pole pretty high up on it. A blast by Gomez. Look how high that hit on that foul ball. That was a bomb out there to left field. The ball had some serious hook on it. Just the nature of the pitch. Gomez out in front a little bit, but was able to keep it just enough fair. And Greg is sitting out there saying, who sits on the first pitch curveball? <laughs> well, that's the thing about Carlos Gomez. I don't think he looks for anything in particular. He's looking for the baseball, and it feels like he's going to get a good swing on it, and he's going to attack. See Luke Croy's night at the plate presented by Wendy's two hits two singles three to one Brewers on six hits against Greenkey. Yeah, that's got to feel good for Gomez 18 homers now 59 runs batted in. What a player He's <laughs> something isn't he. And Luke Croy in the same spot. All three hits coming to left field. He's three for three. And it's almost like Zach Greinke saying, I'm going to keep throwing him slides until he misses one. And he's hung all three of them. Left him up in the strike zone, 85 miles an hour. And Luke Roy able to wait back long enough to get the barrel of the bat on it. Every one of them have landed just about the same spot. <laughs> Three hits, three singles. He's aboard for Ryan Braun. All three of the runs coming in on the long ball tonight for the Brew Crew. Chris Davis hit a two run shot in the second. That was an opposite field homer to the back of the Dodger bullpen in right center. Braun is 0 for 2. Zach Grinke two wins off the National League lead to start play today with 12. Willie Peralta, Adam Wainwright sit atop the league. Grinke seventh in the league in ERA starting play today. 2.71. Clayton Kershaw, tomorrow starter, is the ERA leader. In the NL, he's the only pitcher in the National League with an earned run average under two at this point. Yeah, amazing. You know, great. He's seventh in earned run average. Coming into play tonight. One ball, one strike. Luke Croy at first. Two and one to Braun. Grinky and Kershaw are four and five in the league in strikeouts as well. Actually, Grinky just moved into third. 
passing Madison Baumgartner with his five strikeout night tonight. So three and five in the league. You get the idea with these two. Yeah. And that's not all the Dodgers have either. Braun chased one, two and two the count. Well, took a little bit off. And down in the dirt. And Bernie's been chasing a little bit lately. And some sliders out of the strike zone. That pitch looked like maybe some type of an off speed change up type of pitch. And, and Ryan having a difficult time laying off of those. Starting to bat a little bit sooner than he normally does. Two two and Braun gets jammed fouls it off. Rinky working hard to try to get a ground ball out of Braun here. Braun bounced into a six four three double play in the first inning. Rinky has two double plays tonight. Braun and Scooter Jeanette. There's only been one fly ball out tonight. That was the pop up by Mark Reynolds. Everything else has been on the ground. Frankie knows as well as anyone got to keep the ball out of the air at Miller Park. The two that have been in the air have left. The ballpark. Nice block back there by Ellis. That's that same pitch that he threw Brawny early on that he swung at this time laying off of it. Because it wasn't over to plate Ellis doing a nice job keeping. Lucroy at first base. So the count goes full and we'll see if. Brennecke takes the gamble and sends Luke Roy. Try to stay out of a double play. 3 1 Brewers lead on a Gomez Homer. Adding to their lead to start this inning. Luke Roy stays put Braun takes the walk. <laughs> a little black bat flip by Braun. I'll tell you what you could mark that walk right there sometimes. A walk will do wonders for you at the plate. Saw the ball well after he chased one and he was satisfied with that walk. And that's the first way out of a time when you're not swinging the bat all that well. Not to say that Braun's in that. I mean, there's a big difference between not getting hits and being in a slump. There are times when he's hitting the ball right on the nose, but right at infielders or outfielders. That was the case for Braun on the last road trip. But a lot of times you don't swing yourself out of a slump. You got to take pitches, see the baseball. So here is Aramis Ramirez. Nobody out in the sixth. Gomez started it with a home run. Lucroy, a single. He's now at second. And Ryan Braun at first after the walk. He got him to chase one. Ramirez extending his hitting streak to 11 games with that single in the fourth. He's hitting nearly 500 during the hitting streak. Big spot for the Brewers. What a chance to add to their lead against Zach Greinke in the sixth inning. And Ramirez into left center. That's a base hit. Into the gap it goes. In the score comes Lucroy. Braun to third. And Ramirez delivers. Four to one Brewers. Yeah, he's something else. When he gets into these stretches, Ramirez is one of the best run producers in the game. I mean, seeing it well. Same pitch that he got on his last base hit. This time able to pull the hands in and hit it into the gap. Greg trying to come in on his hands. Dumps it into the gap out there, and Luke were able to score. Still nobody out. Ryan Braun able to get the third base. Four consecutive base runners for Milwaukee to start this sixth inning. And now four runs on eight hits. Checking on Luke Roy. Remember, he missed yesterday with tightness in the hamstring. Says he's all right, good to go. That's a good sign. How about Luke Roy's numbers against Granky? Five for six. <laughs> it was two for three coming into the, into the game, and three for three tonight. 
Scooter Jeanette in the air, center field. And Braun is going to tag. Puig's got a great arm. They'll hold him up. And yeah. the throw comes in. No way. Just to touch up the line would have been an easy out for the Dodgers. First out of the inning as Jeanette flies out to Puig. They knew he was going to airmail this one all the way in the air. A little bit off the mark, but no way Ryan Braun's going to test that arm. Not on a fly ball that shallow. Not especially with nobody out. Still have a chance at a sack fly. I don't even think with one out you test Puig. Yeah. Maybe somebody else. Puig looks like he's a little shaken up out there. Dodgers still dragging from their travel a couple of nights ago. It was a 6:30 a.m. arrival yesterday after a night game in Anaheim on Thursday night. All right, here's Chris Davis. 4-1 Brewers, first and third, and Davis fouls it away. In my experience, you know, playing broadcasting, it always seems to be the second day that gets you the most. You have travel like that. You get in 6:30. I think your adrenaline, I mean, takes over a little bit that first day, but it's the second day that it really hits you. Brewers got two in the second on a two run homer by Davis. Adding two here in the sixth. In the dirt, Ellis keeps it close enough. Braun thought about it. And Ramirez just didn't see it right away. Ramirez could have gone to second base. That would have been a big play to eliminate that double play ball. One sure hesitated and did what he should have done. If you don't go right away, stay put. One ball, one strike on Davis. Two and one. Powerball home run leaderboard has Reynolds and Davis now at the top with 19 apiece. Gomez just hit number 18. Braun has 14. Second in the National League and homers the Brewers behind the Rockies. Three and one. Davis showing a good eye. Granky trying to get him to chase up in the strike zone, and Chris laid off. Still no activity in that Dodgers bullpen, and you you would figure that Granky gets a little bit extra leash given the success that he's had. Rick Honeycutt, pitching coach of the Dodgers, standing next to Mattingly. Pitch count at 78. Hitters count for Davis with runners at the corners. And had a big cut. That's a change up, taking a little bit off, and that's a heck of a pitch. And no, Davis was sitting on a fastball, and Granky pulled the string on him. Well, now you wonder does Grinky go with that strikeout slider that he has? Really yeah. hasn't been the strikeout slider tonight. He's Not left today. him up in his own. You're right. I think that changeup has been his best off speed pitch. Let's see what he does. Braun at third, Ramirez at first. And the payoff pitch, and Davis bounces one foul. Chris Davis coming up on a calendar year since he was called back up from AAA last year. And from the time of his first home run to now, he's hit 30 since last July. 30 homers in 146 games 
Only John Carlos Stanton and Justin Upton have more home runs among National League outfielders. He's been a great story. Three and two. Got him. Rinky strikes him out. That's a big out. And what was the fastball that time? Fastball up and in. After a back to back changeup. And Greinke slips one by him on the inside part of the plate. Mm. And when you needed contact or a, at least one of the outfield, Greinke powers the fastball by Davis. His sixth strikeout. And man in third, nobody out. Ryan Braun still standing there. Here's Mark Reynolds. 0 for 2 tonight. Grinky struck him out in the fifth. Reynolds pops it up. Out in the grass is Rojas, and the inning is over. Grinky gets out of a jam, but the Brewers score twice. Carlos Gomez leads off the inning. Hammers one off the foul pole and left. Home run number 18 for Gomez. And then Ramirez drives it a run. And the Brewers up four to one as we go to the seventh. Or two in the bottom of the sixth inning, leading Zach Grinky and the Dodgers on our way to the seventh. How about we take you back to the fourth and our Southwest Airlines non stoppable play? Beautiful pick and throw by Aramis Ramirez, taking a hit away from Matt Kemp. And no way to stay in front of that. I mean, that's a nasty hop. Might need some dental work if we stay in front of that one. Ramirez with that great play also has two hits, and he just drove in a run with a single in the sixth. Meanwhile, Mike Fires pitching very well. He's only given up two hits and one run. That run was a homer by the man at the plate, Adrian Gonzalez, who takes strike one. Gonzalez with homers in back to back games against the Brew Crew. Bouncer to second. Scooter Jeanette out number one. What a start this is turning out to be for Mike Fires. Yeah. Filling in for Matt Garza, who's on the disabled list with an oblique injury. So far, looking like he did when he first came up in May two years ago. Very effective with a fastball. He hasn't really needed too many changeups. It's been fastball, cutter. Just got Gonzalez on a cut fastball.
The Brewers have won three out of four on this homestand. A win tonight would secure back to back series wins against the top two teams in the West. Camp out in front of that big curveball by Fires. This was the hot bat for the Dodgers coming in. Reigning player of the week in the National League. In there for a strike. Oh, and to the count on Kim. Matt Kemp hitting nearly 400 over his last two weeks of games. Has six home runs since the All Star break as well. Has 14 for the season. Coming in bunches here lately after the break. The 1 2 and Kemp able to lay off a curveball. Kemp finally healthy. You know, battling injuries the last couple of years and. And before he started getting all those injuries, he was one of the best players in the game. Defensively, could swing the bat, had good speed. And he's showing that once again. Fires a long look. Now he steps off, wants to start over with Luke Roy. Two and two. And Kemp muscles one over the head of Segura. So Matt Kemp with a single with one away. Yeah, that big curveball in laid back just enough did Kemp to get it off the handle and just out of the reach of Segura. Hey, tomorrow's service sales day here at the ballpark. The Brewers will wear special uniforms honoring Hispanic heritage in baseball as they take on the Dodgers. And all fans will get a chorizo racing sausage bobble. Courtesy of Clements for tickets call 414 902 4000 or go to Brewers.com. There he is, Terizo. Big day tomorrow. It's all fired up. Bets are on him in the sausage race. Brian Wilson loosening in the Dodger bullpen. Carl Crawford with Kemp at first. Crawford tonight is 0 for 2. Fires pitch count in great shape. This is number 85 as he works here in the seventh inning. Getting 89 miles an hour by these Dodgers hitters. It is amazing, but you know, that combination of the big curveball, the deceptive delivery, hides the baseball well. Hitters will tell you, just don't pick it up all that quickly. It's on you fast, but it doesn't have a whole lot of velocity behind it. Drafted in 2009, Mike Fires. Improbable rise to the big leagues. He just kept mowing everybody down in whatever league he was in. Racking up a bunch of strikeouts. You look at his minor league numbers and you say, wow, this guy must really throw hard. Not the case. He's a pitcher. Knows his craft. Trying to break through and be a regular starter in the big leagues. He'll have his chance with Garza on the disabled list. Two and one to Crawford. And a bouncer back to the mound. Fires to second for one. Segura's throw to first. In time! And the speedy Crawford is cut down on a 1-6-3 double play. 
Mike fires through seven. Just one run allowed. And a beautiful double play to end the inning. Look at this hose by Segura. Wow. 4 1 crew. for the third annual Brewers Mini Marathon and 10K. That'll be on Saturday, September 20th, beginning and ending at Miller Park. The course goes past many Milwaukee landmarks. Runners receive a race shirt, a medal, Brewers ticket voucher, and can celebrate at a post-race tailgate party. For details, visit foxsportswisconsin.com. Click on the More tab. Beautiful night here on a Saturday in Milwaukee. Zach Grinke is out. Six innings, four runs. And it'll be Brian Wilson, the former Giant, on the mound for Los Angeles. Yeah, it's been a tough season for Brian Wilson. He started the year on the disabled list. Right elbow, ulnar nerve inflammation. Sounds serious. Used to be a guy throwing in the upper 90s. Started Segura off with a curveball. Last appeared on Tuesday against the Angels. Gave up a run in an inning of work. Gene Segura leads off and a roller out to short. Miguel Rojas for the first out. Heck of a play by Segura to finish off that double play against a speedy base runner in Carl Crawford. You don't see many double plays on Crawford. Yeah, big arm for Segura. I mean, winding up is a good throw by Mike Fires, which allowed Segura to wind up and get off that strong throw. What do we got on the speed pitch on that Segura throw to first of him? It's got to be what 90? At least. Flat footed with no mound. Well, that's 90 from second to first. We're not talking about 60 <laughs> feet. <laughs> right. That's something man. He's got a great arm. Fires batting for the third time and that's a new story. Because he's. Pitching well enough to bat for the third time. Is he ever? Yeah, Three no hitter. Yeah, no activity in the Brewers bullpen, which leads you to believe he's going to go back out there. The fact that he's getting an at bat. Why not? As the pitch counts in very good shape. Well, the Brewers looking to hang an L on Zach Grinky. Came into this game 15 and one at Miller Park. Had never lost at Miller Park until last year in May when the Brewers beat him. Was, that was his second game returning from the disabled list last year. And when it was all said and done, it was his worst game. Gave up five earned runs in four innings.
Able to check his swing. Fires has struck out twice tonight. Grinky finished with six K's, giving up eight hits and four runs. Small victories are important at the plate for Fires. And a foul ball is a small victory. The 2 2. Yeah, good take. 3 and 2 now. Commanding some respect, a slider from Brian Wilson. Wilson's throwing a lot of him. He's only throwing 90 miles an hour. This guy used to throw 98 miles an hour with the Giants. There's one down the middle at 90. And down goes Fires. Two outs, two up, two down. And to the top of the order now, and Carlos Gomez. Well, he gave one a ride in the sixth inning, got this crowd of 40,000 on its feet. Came off the bat at 99.3 miles per average, per miles per hour. The season average, a little over 77 miles per hour. That's hitting it with some velocity. Off the bat. I think Andrew McCutcheon has the highest reading we've had this year. I think it was 103. That left the bat. Remember, that was a curveball as well. That ball's hit hard, but foul. How hard was that one? I'm going to say that was 94 miles an hour. Oh, it's got to be in fair territory for our technology to work. Does it register? So I was right. Two balls and a strike. Wilson delivers and a swing and a miss. <laughs> Gomez getting his money's worth. That was a swing through, one hand off the bat, double skip toward the mound. Can they track the speed of the bat through the strike zone? Somebody should. Blues have a couple of guys I'd like to uh, track on that. Mm -hmm. Chris Davis, another swing speed. They do that in golf, you know. They right. track uh, swing speed and ball velocity. Three and two. Two outs in the inning. Gomez slashes one foul. What's your swing speed? I don't. I don't know. That means it's low. Pretty low. <laughs> if it were up there, you'd About know. About 150. Okay. I don't know. That's been a while since I did that. It really doesn't matter, right? As long as you have another one in your pocket to drop if you hit it in the woods. As a breaking ball down low, Gomez draws the walk. All right, with two outs, the Brewers have a base runner. With Lucroy coming up. So yeah, fix, yeah, excuse me. You figure that uh, Gomez is going to try and steal a base here, but we were talking about Luke Curry all night. The fact that he's got three hits, all landing at about the same spot and very similar pitches that he's hit. All off of Zach Granke, all sliders, very similar location. And there you go. Ask and you shall receive. Yeah, the two top ones about the same spot. It, it's about the same spot of the bat. This one down the trademark a little bit. The one on the right, a little bit uh, right on the sweet spot. And the one on the bottom, a little bit down on the end, but all very similar results. It's a good swing, though. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, the plane of the bat, very similar. The belt buckle facing the pitcher and the head down. Three singles to left. And to the naked eye, they look like the, the exact same image three times, but those were three different 
plate appearances. And three line drives. All off Grinky. Gomez might want to run here. Wilson holding the ball. There he goes. Lucroy lets him run. Throw to second. And Gomez is in there. Gordon tried to sell it as an out. Second base umpire Rob Drake not buying it. Stolen base. Well, and as usual, you get a meeting at the mound. You've got Brian Wilson off this, the mound so they can take a look at it. Gomez is going back with the head first slide. He doesn't have a lot of success with the feet first slide. And very difficult to tell right there. The hand on the bag. Don Mattingly taking a look at it. You can see this is what drives you crazy about this replay system. Too close to tell. They're still looking at it. Don Mattingly still in the dugout. Now he's going to come out after all this time. Yeah, this is the part I don't like. Yeah, you got Brian Wilson off the mound. It's obvious what they're doing, so why not just go out there? And, and now Don Mattingly's going to go out. And now he has 30 seconds to uh, make a, dis a determination whether he wants to challenge or not. And this is a big call in the game. You got Luke yeah. Croy up. You got a man in scoring position. You don't blame. Don Mattingly for wanting to look at it, but why does it take so long? You got you should have to go out there right away. What he did was he told Brian Wilson to stay off the mound. You know, to give his replay crew an opportunity to take a look at it. So the crew chief is Joe West on the right. Calling umpire Rob Drake on the left. Joe West in communication with Chelsea, New York. Where the replay challenge center is. And the call on the field is safe. Well, your guess is a good, as good as mine. I mean, this is about as close as it gets. It looks on a number of different angles that he's safe, but you don't know what they're looking at back in New York. I'm not sure where he tagged him or if he did. You know, uh, at uh, the Fox seminar earlier this year, the baseball seminar, Joe Torre made a presentation to all of us, uh, all the announcers and producers and directors. And, you know, he made a pretty clear point that stalling tactics would not be tolerated. And uh, they would monitor and issue discipline accordingly. But we've had it a couple of nights here, and it's happened twice in this game. Where and Renicky sent Lucroy out to the mound as well, but at some point, as these managers start sending players out to take time, you've got to pull that back a little bit. And this is where baseball has to make an adjustment over the offseason. You can't take this long to take a look at it. I mean, if it takes this long, it's just too clear, it's too tough to close to call. Yeah, the longer you wait, the more you think that they're going to overturn it. That's kind of been, you know, the experience in these replays. They're taking a lot of time, and we'll see what they come up with. The headsets are starting to come off, and we'll see what the call is going to be. Joe West will make the call here, safe. So it is upheld. After all of that, so Gomez steals his 24th. Base of the year. And so from the time that safe call was initially made till when they just made the safe call in the replay, I mean, it took a long time. That had to be three plus minutes. Too long. All right, a runner at second now in scoring position. Estimated time on that challenge was 2.14. But that didn't include all of the stalling prior to. And Lucroy takes a strike. Gomez putting all of his skills on display here tonight. The power, the speed. He drew a walk with two outs to get to first. And now the stolen base has him in scoring position with two outs. Four to one Brewers. Lucroy with three hits tonight. Two and one.
Brian Wilson from the stretch. Long look in. And Lucroy cuts and misses two and two. Yeah, had a good one to hit. Swung right through it. Oh, fastball, 89 miles an hour from Wilson. He's about eight or nine miles an hour off of what he was throwing when he was with the Giants. Elbow surgery has got him. That surgery in 2012 had the Tommy John surgery. That was the year Romo took over for Wilson as the closer, Sergio Romo, and the Giants won the World Series that season. Wilson in his second season with the Dodgers. Signed him late last year, and he pitched well. Got double zero on his back. And lots of other stuff on his person. Yes. <laughs> Lucroy down in the count, two and two. Gomez with a big lead at second. And there he goes, and Lucroy lays off, throw to third base in time for the out. And the inning ends at third. And we'll see if Renicky challenges this one, leaving Jonathan Lucroy standing at the plate with two outs. Yeah, not a good idea to steal third base. That looked like a pretty good tag by Uribe. He went right to the bag, didn't try and reach for Gomez, and he looked out. You can't make the third out at third base. Now with Lucroy at the plate. And the Brewers will not challenge. So the inning is over. Four to one. Brewers lead it. Cloudless night on a Saturday here in Wisconsin. Beautiful moon. Official full moon tomorrow at one. Seventh inning. Double play to end the inning. Crawford at the plate. Bouncer back to fires. And right, look at that cannon by Gene Segura. One of the big plays of this game. A 1-6-3 double play to make it a three batter inning for Mike Fires. And he is rolling along here. Segura. Had some nice defensive plays tonight again. Fires just 87 pitches as he enters his eighth inning of work. Four to one Brewers. They got two in the second on a Chris Davis two run homer. Two in the sixth. Gomez homered and Ramirez an RBI single. Here's Juan Uribe at the bottom of the order coming up for Los Angeles. And a strike. Fires has 88 pitches, 61 strikes. And has been ahead of a lot of hitters here tonight. Two and one. 
And it really has been all about the fastball for Fires. Everybody talks about his curveball, the changeup, and he's been very careful using those pitches, but the four seamer and the cutter have been what has gotten him through this game so far. Good location with it. Expanding the strike zone for these Dodgers hitters, and for the most part, they haven't been able to lay off. Three balls and a strike. Fires opens this eighth inning with activity in the Brewers bullpen. These are all bonus innings for Fires. Coming up from AAA for the injured Matt Garza. Turning in a beauty here. There's a pop up. And that one's going to be close. Headed for the top of the Brewers dugout. Not a whole lot of foul territory here. Count goes full three and two. Brewers lead the Pirates in the division by a game and a half. As you see Smith and Kinsler loosening in the bullpen. Pittsburgh is trailing the Padres tonight in the eighth inning. Two to one. San Diego leads bottom eight. Pirates are at the plate. Cardinals lost in Baltimore today. In the air to right center. Ryan Braun is there and fires comes back down three and one in the count to get a rebate for the first out. It's something you know two fastballs 89 miles an hour pretty much down the middle and your rebate jammed both times. Deceiving delivery tough to pick up ball jumps on these guys very quickly. Here's A.J. Ellis. What a start for Mike Fires tonight. What a huge lift. Just three hits and one run an Adrian Gonzalez home run. Ellis tonight is 0 for 2. Just missed. Two balls and a strike. Fires, even when he's missing, has been right around the zone. He's had great command tonight. And a little half swing. Fires pounces on it. Got a hustle, a throw over. Nicely done. Mike Fires gets A.J. Ellis for out number two. And a check swing. Ellis just didn't see it all that well. Tried to get out of the way, couldn't. And excuse me, swing and a gift out for Mike Fires. One out away for, from getting through eight innings here tonight. So Fires with two outs. Dodgers announce a pinch hitter. Justin Turner, who's been Mattingly's best pinch hitter, and was in the crosshairs yesterday defensively, made two costly errors. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be out of shortstop again tonight. And the Ramirez is not available. You would figure he would have been starting. Oblique. Ramirez left the game after his first at bat yesterday. Turner did have a hit yesterday at a pinch hit appearance. But his defensive problems helped open the door for the Brewers as part of a four run seventh inning. Fires has him down 0 and 2. What a game he's pitching. This crowd wants to see him get through eight. Has four strikeouts and Turner fouls it away. 
guy has been a good pinch hitter this year. He is nine for 20. Stays on the baseball well. He got things started for the Dodgers last night in the seventh inning with a base hit. Fires trying to put him away here. The 0-2. And a swing and a miss. Mike Fires, welcome back to Milwaukee. But Mike Fires just left the dugout, went into the clubhouse. He leaves after eight strong innings, giving up just one run. He'll be the key top at point on Brewers Live post game coming up in just a moment. But our Marshfield Clinic shining moment: Mike Fires, eight strong innings, just three hits, the run, a walk, five strikeouts. A great story, you know, batting back this year. He came in, but what he had to do tonight: he had to command the fastball, locate his pitches, and use all his pitches, along with being ahead of hitters. And he's done that well all night long. This is a guy who takes over for Matt Garza, who has just put on the disabled list this year. Didn't know what you were going to get tonight, but what a performance. We hope to hear from Mike Fires. We'll hear from the manager as well. There he is back in that Brewer dugout. And the final numbers, just 101 pitches. Wow. Brewers have a chance to win this series tonight. B.A. All right, Craig, thanks. Think about this. Mike Fires all season in AAA and 17 starts just once when eight innings. Tough to go eight innings in the minor leagues with uh, a pretty strict pitch count. He goes eight against the Los Angeles Dodgers tonight. And the only Dodger, the only at bat for the Dodgers that got to second base with the home run by Gonzalez. Dodgers did not have an at bat with a man in scoring position tonight against Mike Fires through eight innings. Amazing job as Justin Turner takes over. Just like last night at shortstop. Here in the bottom of the eighth. Yeah, the new pitcher is Pedro Baez. Brian Wilson works a scoreless inning. Lucroy was at the plate when Gomez was thrown out. Baez just making his fourth appearance for the Dodgers. And Baez was a an infielder. You know, not that long ago, two three years ago, was an infielder. Just wasn't able to swing the bat enough, but decided he wanted to try his hand at pitching, and here he is in the major leagues. Lucroy a shot right at Turner. And Lucroy is retired. Hit the ball hard all four times at the plate tonight. Lucroy three for four. He's out. Here comes Ryan Braun.
Braun looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 2. Had a walk his last time up. Brewers left him stranded at third. Zach Grinke went six innings, eight hits, four earned runs. Fires eight innings, one earned run. Strikes out five as Braun bounces one to Turner. It's amazing how the ball will find you, right? Yeah, it's amazing, huh? Two up, two down. Had a rough time yesterday, but able to handle the first two ground balls tonight. So two quick outs, and it'll be a Ramos Ramirez. Mike Fires has a chance to go to three and zero career against the Dodgers in three games, two starts, sixteen and two thirds innings, just two earned runs. His first ever major league start was against Los Angeles. That's off the glove of Uribe in the left field. So Ramos Ramirez making a bit at his third hit. See how they scored. That was a hot shot. That's got to be a base hit. And it will be. A bullet Uribe, very slick defensive third baseman. He can field. So three out of four tonight for Ramirez. All singles. As an RBI has pushed his batting average over 300. Now hitting 301. Scooter Jeanette with two away. The Dodgers will have the ninth spot in the order to lead off. And then to the top, D. Gordon, Yasiel Puig. If anybody gets on, Adrian Gonzalez. Smith and K Rod in the bullpen. Right now it's a save situation. And you'd see K Rod. Yeah, the converted inferior to Baez got a pretty good arm, 97 miles an hour with that last fastball. I had a rough time swinging a bat, so just I'll go out there on the mound and try and blow the ball by hitters. And here he is in the major leagues. Start of the year at Double A this year. He's got Jeanette 0 and 2. Scooter had a hit off Grinky in the second inning. He's one for three tonight. He singled and scored. He was on when Davis went deep. Brewers have home runs from Chris Davis and Carlos Gomez tonight. Ramirez has the other RBI. It's just been a good, clean game, and Fires has set the tempo tonight. The Brewers starter just up from Triple A Nashville. Very impressive, and eight strong. Got an update for you from Pittsburgh, San Diego, up two to one. And the Pirates had second and third, nobody out. Ike Davis lined out. Marte struck out. That is Kevin Quackenbush doing all this. And then Gregory Polanco flies out to right. Second and third, nobody out. The Pirates don't score. Kevin Quackenbush. The all name team in the big leagues gets out of it and it's still 2 1 San Diego as they go to the ninth. Big chopper Turner is going to get all three outs in this inning. All right, here we go to the ninth. And it looks like it's K Rob time 4 1 Brewers.
comes up been dominating in triple A gets a start for Matt Garza and dominates in the big leagues eight innings one run strikes out five the only walk he gave up was to Zach Greinke at the plate and now he'll watch Frankie Rodriguez try to close it out Gerardo Parra comes in to play left field to tighten up the defense and there is K Rod Columbia St. Mary save tracker at 34 for Rodriguez. Now K Rod you know, pitched on Thursday against the Giants tossed a perfect ninth inning for his 34th save of the season. You know, K Rod with a save tonight will tie Trevor Rosenthal for the National League leading saves. 34 out of 38 with a 289 earned run average. For Francisco Rodriguez. He's only blown four this year. Excellent save percentage. And he has a three run lead to work with. But the Dodgers will have nine, one, and two coming up. And nine is going to be Andre Ethier coming off the bench. Then D. Gordon, then Puig. If anybody gets on, Gonzalez. K Rod using a lot of fastballs on Thursday against the Giants. Yeah, mixed in the curveball and a change up, but to a lot of heaters. Figuring that hitters are going up there looking for that change up. Tried to get him get in on his hands. You see K Rod ranking 12th all time in saves with 338. Next on the list, Raleigh Fingers. Yeah, he is inching closer to the Hall of Famer, Raleigh Fingers. Andre Ethier. He pinch hit last night and had an infield hit that put the Dodgers on top. He's five for 15 as a pinch hitter. Two and one. Goes to three balls and a strike. Yeah, ball four, all four pitches so far in this at bat have been fastballs. Talked about K Rod really relying on the fastball a lot lately. Trying to change it up a little bit. Got a hitter's count for ETH here, and that one's in there. Thought about it. Little half swing, but it was called a strike, and it's three and two. First appearance for Frankie. He did not pitch last night. He was up and throwing last night, but the Brewers scored three runs in the eighth to take a 9 3 lead. Took him out of a save situation. The payoff pitch is inside ball four. Never yeah. a good way to start. Mm. So now the Dodgers back at the top of their order. A leadoff walk. D. Gordon will bat. Coming off a single his last time up. Two hits in the series. He's two for eight. Lucroy threw him out trying to steal second base in the sixth inning. It's another big play in this game. Dodgers have hardly had any base runners tonight. Matter of fact, Mike Fires worked from the stretch to only three batters in this game. Yeah. And the Dodgers didn't have a man in scoring position. Not one at bat with a man in scoring position against Mike Fires tonight. Only run and Adrian Gonzalez home run in the fourth. In the air to center field. Gomez going back. And there is out number one. D. Gordon flies out. Yeah. Ethier stays put at first. And now it gets interesting, doesn't it? Quig Gonzalez Kemp. Gonzalez is their hottest hitter right now. 
Kemp's not too far behind. And uh, what scares you about Puig is he hasn't had a hit in his series. Puig is 0 for 3 tonight, 0 for 7 in the series. He did draw a walk last night. And a bouncing ball. Segura scoops it, throwing a second for one. Jeanette's throw to first, not in time. It was close. Jeanette gave it a good ride, but Puig too fast. Yeah, just barely able to beat it down there. The Brewers did the best they could to try and turn it. A little bit of a bobble by Segura, and that's all it took. Puig able to beat it by a step. Not even half a step. Two outs in the inning. Puig is aboard. Tying run still on deck. Now the good news is that Gonzalez does not represent the tying run. Tying run on deck. Crowd of over 40,000, 40,500 on hand, and they're coming to their feet as Gonzalez takes ball one. Gonzalez homered in the fourth, the only tally of the night for the Dodgers. His second home run in the series. Yeah, they're going to play behind Puig. Give Reynolds a little bit more coverage at first base. Two and zero. Oh. Mike Fires anxiously watching. Eight strong innings tonight from Fires. One earned run. Just up from Triple A Nashville, trying to beat Zach Grinky, his former rotation mate. Two and zero. Oh. Strike. Two and one. Well, just able to catch that outside edge. Gonzalez didn't like the call. Over the last couple of weeks, as you see this last pitch, they uh, might have got a got a call according to Fox Tracks. They did. And Gonzalez still barking at home plate umpire Marty Foster. It's only strike one, Adrian. You're all right. In the last couple of weeks, the Brewers have beaten David Price, Adam Wainwright, and a chance to hand Zach Greinke a loss tonight. Strike two. Two and two, and Gonzalez shaking his head again. That was a good pitch off speed, able to drop it into the strike zone. Takes off Gonzalez in the right field shallow Jeanette is out and he can't make the play Ron comes up with it Puig all the way to third oh, Jeanette gave a great effort just out of his reach and a base hit for Adrian Gonzalez and now the tying run will bat well Ryan Braun playing very deep and remember he got Jeanette battling that quad issue and looked like he got out there in pretty good shape but just a little bit out of his reach. Now that brings the tying run to the plate. And Jeanette gave it an effort, but came up a little bit short. Gonzalez muscles one into right center. Two of the four Dodger hits tonight. And a dangerous bat is coming up. Matt Kemp. Kemp's been on a home run tear lately. Six of them since the All-Star break. First and third, two outs. 4-1 Brewers in the ninth. K-Rod has had Kemp's number. 0 for 6, four strikeouts is Kemp against Frankie. And whatever worked then, K-Rod needs now. <laughs> 
I don't think K-Rod's thrown a changeup in this entire inning. It's been curveballs, it's been fastballs. Lucroy sets up outside. And Kemp right off the end of the bat. Reynolds scoops it. K-Rod's there. Ball game. Mike Fires wins. His return to the big leagues. Has 11 career wins, three of them against the Dodgers. K Rod to the top of the league with a save. Number 35 for Frankie Rodriguez, and the Brewers win it 4 to 1. As Mike Fires beats Zach Grinke, and the Brewers go deep twice. Chris Davis, a two run shot. Carlos Gomez, a solo home run in the six, and Rock, the Brewers take down another. Of the game's elite pitchers, this time it's Zach Greenfield. Yeah, that's why you don't play this game on paper, right? I mean, you look at the pitching matchup. You got Mike Fires making his first start in quite some time for the Milwaukee Brewers. You got Greinke, although he's been struggling as of late, one of the best in the business. And this Brewer offense just seems to rise to the occasion. And you got to tip your hat to this Brewers pitching staff. They have been terrific on this homestand so far. What a performance by Mike Fires! Set the tone. Eight innings. Picks up his first win of the season, his 11th career victory. And what a thrill that must be coming up from AAA Nashville. He's standing by Mike Fires with Sophia. Take it away, Sophia. Thanks, Brian. And Mike, welcome back to Milwaukee. Eight strong innings for you here tonight. First hit wasn't until the home run in the fourth. How are you able to settle into rhythm early? Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm just doing the same thing I did in Nashville. Uh, just throwing a lot of strikes, uh, making them swing at my pitches, and uh, you know, just trying to get off the field as quick as possible. I mean, a great hitting team. I, I can't make too many mistakes. Like, I mean, you saw the one uh, home run. I mean, it, they're going to capitalize on a mistake. So you got to make sure uh, a lot of your pitches are hitting the corners and keeping it down. Dodgers didn't have a runner in scoring position. How good was your command tonight? Oh, I, like I said, I felt great. Um, everything, I think, everything was working. Uh, you know, hitting the corners. Uh, you know, then they started uh, swinging. They started swinging early uh, later in the game, and I uh, definitely had to make sure it was, uh, you know, on the corners or down, just so uh, didn't give up any more home runs. How satisfying is it to come up with a win and that kind of dominating performance here in your first start? Man, this this is this is what you dream of. Uh, you know, playing in front of these fans, uh, it's, it's just great. It's a great feeling. They're always behind you, and I, I just love it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike, for your time. And Craig, a tremendous outing for Mike Fires here tonight. Eight strong innings, just one run on three hits, five strikeouts as well. Boy, we're going to break down those numbers and plenty more. A much needed effort as you take a look at the final out. K Rod, another save. Brewers, another series win. They'll go for the sweep tomorrow. We'll cover it all next on Brewers Live.